allow us to see, Lord God, but you gave us a brand new day. And for that, Father God, we just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for watching over us as we slept throughout the night, Lord God. And then, Lord, you allowed the deaf angel not to come to our doors, Father God. Yes. And for that, we just say thank you, Lord thank God. You, Lord. Thank you for the activities of our lambs today, Lord God. Thank you for all that you have done and all that you are doing, Lord God. Then, Lord God, we just pray right now that first and foremost, your will be done in our life, yes. Lord God. We pray, Father God, that you forgive us of our many and every sins, Lord God. Father God, forgive us for the all that we have for our brothers and our sisters today, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to just lay it at the altar, Father God. This is the time that we need to lay everything aside and look up to you, Father God. Look up to the hills from which cometh our help. For surely your word says our help coming from thee. So, Father God, we just come to you asking right now. If there's anything in our hearts this day, Lord God, that's due to the place there, Father God, we just pray right now that you remove it, Lord God. Remove it so that we can stand up and give you a praise today, Lord God. Lord, you've been too good to us for us to sit down on you, Lord God. You've been too good for us to be quiet today, Lord God. So we just pray right now that you break out a praise in our souls, Lord God. Put a praise on the inside, Lord God, so that we can lift up holy hands to a holy God, Father. Lord, you've been too good for us to sit down and be quiet, Lord God. We have a praise in our hearts this day, Lord God. Help us remember the time that we didn't have, Lord God. There's been many of those times, Lord God, but right now we do have. So help us to just give you praise. Help us to give you honor. And help us give you glory this day, Lord God. Because your word says, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it, Lord God. We pray right now for a rejoicing heart. Bless the spirit, Lord God. Father God, we pray for another dose of your Holy Ghost. Just touch us this day, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, that when we leave from this service today, Lord, that we leave here a better person than we came, Father God. Lord, we bless you right now. We need you right now, Lord God. So, Father, we just pray that you touch your man right now, Lord God. Give him a word from all high this day, Lord God. Lord, we came here expecting to hear a word from you. We need to hear a word from you this day, Lord God, to heal the hurt that's in our hearts today, Lord God. Father, some of us came here with some pain on our hearts today. Some of us came with pain in our bodies today, Lord God. Touch like only you can this day, Lord God. Touch us with your word, Father God. Heal us from the inside out so we can go out and tell a dying, dark world that Jesus still lives, that Jesus still is the light of the world. So, Father God, preach to us today. Minister to our souls. Speak to our hearts, our minds, our souls, our very beings. And let us know, Lord God, that you're still with us today, Lord God. Let us know, Lord God, that you still love us, just like you did when you allowed your son to go out on Calvary and be nailed to a cross today, Father God. Just help us remember those times, Father God. And Father God, when you've done those things, we'll be so careful to give you all the praise, to give you all the honor, and to give you all the glory. It's in the mighty, precious, and powerful name of Jesus we do pray and ask it all.
delivery 
heavenly part, just like I am today. And what I mean is that God, he is inviting people in need to come to him. Somebody ought to hear me this morning. You see, there are no special qualifications. They just need to be home. They, they need to be hungry for something that satisfies them. Now, God is not talking about a special heavenly diet. He, he's not talking about no angel food cake. You see, I, I know that will satisfy most of us and a few of us. What God is offering us is something great. Something that will satisfy not only our desire, but also our needs. You see, we think we know how to do this and we know how to do that, but we don't. We try, but we still end up feeling on the inside, uh, 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 empty on the inside. Now, how do I know this? Because when I read this text, and when you read these first three verses, you find it says right here in our text, God says, why spend your money on food that does not give you strength? Why pay for food that does you no good? You see, God, church, has the inner track in our earthly experience. He, he knows that man is always searching for the next fix. He knows that psychologically we are always looking for that something that will remove the void inside. The void of a failed relationship. The void of a heavy burden. The void, the void of sickness and distress, the void of disappointment, my brothers and sisters. You see, we are all born uh, with the inborn incentive, a uh, desire to find that special something. We always want something that will feed us and satisfy us. But, but, but we can't find this in the Atkins diet or uh, the watermelon diet, or uh, the Jenna Craig, Jenna Craig diet, is not that kind of food. God is not offering food for the body. He is offering food for the soul. And throughout history, mankind has tried to find satisfaction in many arenas. In other words, we, 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 we try power, we try prestige, we try possession, and when we sit back and think about it, none of it works. We always end up right back where we started, praying and be willing. You see, here's the big question. Uh, uh, God asks, uh, uh, wants to know how can be interested in so many other how can we be interested in so many other things besides him since he is the only one who can bring us genuine satisfaction God is telling us he's telling us in our text and he's telling us every day why not try me? With all of this going on, why not try me? God's invitation, it requires, and you have to go with French here, is, uh, it requires action. It's about an RSVP. There are three, three churches, three action words in, in this invitation that command our attention. First of all, the invitation uh, says, if you are thirsty, come and drink. Even if you have no money, hope everyone that thirsts come eat and 
Go. 
return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I said it. You see, these words, these words from God is a, is a kind of pledge that we trust. I don't care what nobody else say. I'm learning how to trust in the Lord. And, and, and we all and all we have to do yeah. is reply to his invitation. Right. He, he, he shows up because our presence tell him that we trust in him and rely on him for his salvation. Right. And you see, when we show up, it's because God knows we are ready to obey and keep his commandment. My third point, the invitation says, incline your ear. And it says, come unto me. The word incline, it means to lean a beam. Do you have a minute, not, not just for me, but do you have a minute to hear what God is telling you? You see, at a battleship hospital, there was carrying for a wounded soldier. A soldier was brought in and he was truly sick. The doctors knew that it was hopeless, church. This was one soldier who was not going to make it. So what they did, they sent for the chaplain. I, I wish you had more time, but 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 you have only a minute because this soldier he is dying. His conditions is great. When the chaplain got there, he replied, God only needs a minute. All God needs is a minute of our time. It only takes a minute to read his invitation and reply. And your RSVP can change your life. Are you with the church? When we read the old Testament. We find out uh, the Old Testament nation of Israel, they refuse to reply. So I come to tell you, uh, it was over 2,000 years ago. What happened is uh, God, uh, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, with a new invitation. Christ came uh, and when he came, uh, he said, come unto me. Am I right about it? Uh, he said, if you get a little weary, uh, all you got to do is come unto me. And he said, uh, if you get tired sometimes, uh, what I want you to do uh, is come to me. Am I right about it? And he said, uh, it's an open invitation. Uh, and what I want you to do is, is come unto me. Uh, am I right about it? And he said uh, it has uh, no expectation date, but do you want to come? Uh, come unto me. Am I right about it? More than uh, he's born to live and man is born to die. But we don't know when that time will come. You can refuse uh, this invitation and continue to feed yourself on corruption. Am I right about it? You can refuse uh, the invitation and you can feed, continue to feed on desperation. Am I right about it? You can refuse uh, this invitation and continue to feed your soul uh, on oppression. Am I right about it? You can feed your soul on anything the world has to offer. But I come by to tell you that the world has an expiration time. Am I right about it? And I don't know why, how you feel this morning, but when I sat down and I see this sickness and death all around us, I know our expiration is coming fast. Am I right? God's assurance 
He can do it for you. If you study your Bible, you read the books of the Bible. When an earthquake it's not a good thing. It came Moses was up talking to God. It came back then. And it came also when Jesus was crucified. The earth shook. We ought to remember that. If you read your, read your books, you'll find out Israel now.
continue to shower your blessings upon each and every one of us. Bless our families, bless our homes. And not only that, we pray that you just bless this church. We pray that you just open our hearts and let us realize that, that you never make a mistake. That you'll be with us even to the end of time. And then we pray that you touch our hearts to know that when we show up, then you'll show up. Because we're showing you that we're trusting in your holy and divine word. As we leave here, watch over us as we travel up and down the dangerous highways and byways. Bless our homes. Bless this city. Bless this country. Bless these people to know that 